Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. I'm doing pretty good, not bad. There might be a little bit of noise here and there. Um, Doug's got some things going on outside, but um, yeah, I'll work through it either way. I'm going to share a link to a Greek scholar, ancient Greek, what you need to understand if not learn or be able to read and translate like I did when I was younger. And I've told people the original scriptures were not, are not, and never will be in Hebrew. It just, and even I've got historians, chronologists, linguists. I've got proof from every angle that what I'm speaking about, that the ones that call them Israelites are not who they say they are. Even in the scriptures, it says that, you know. So I'm going to share a link with somebody or from somebody, and if you stick with it and listen with an open heart and mind, um, nothing I ever share should take God out of your heart or the spirit of God that works within all of us. None of that. I mean, you would be agnostic, meaning against knowledge for you not to want to know. Say even if you were um, studying Satanism, which I never would and I would never be a part of. Some people think that it's it's jokey jokey to like hail Satan is just saying basically, hey bro, within yourself realizing that the flesh is controlled by him. It's not a joke to me. If I find out somebody's truly a Satanist, I'm done with them. But understand there's two types of people we need to reach on this planet. And the Christ Spirit doesn't need to talk to the ones that are already with him, if you understand that. So like the Bible being like a parable itself, it's a book of good and evil. Um, you, Okay, somebody asked me, Uma asked me, um, what Bible do I read? I prefer the King James for the mere reason that the code from the Masons is in there using the Webster Dictionary. And you can read about everything I speak about and everything this Greek scholar will teach you is in there if you know how to follow the codes, which I have made a video on doing that and really don't care to rehash the time that it would take to go into all that. But it is true. The codes are there. You can see them in the King James. So, um, yeah. And when, and that's, you know, you'll see what taking out parts of words or adding, um, even a vowel to another word, like if it was him to change it to a her or vice versa, is extremely important in us understanding the word of God. Now, if you want to actually follow Christ and have God in your heart, you're not going to want to be a Satanist. You will not want to follow a Zionist Judaism. You are not trying to become Jewish. Or if you are, the truth of what's in the God spell, spell casting, that magic book, what's in the Holy Scriptures really isn't for you to understand anyway because your lack of wanting to learn isn't there. You have to know both sides of what's going on within that whole thing before you're going to really understand the two separate types of people that are being represented in it. You know, 
and it's it's deep. It's it's horribly deep. It's flipping painful. You know. But it's sure worth learning. Even if you don't want to learn another language, it doesn't matter. You know, you can listen to somebody who will translate that for you. And you'll know. It's like when something makes sense in the Greek and it's logical, like childbirth. And then you take and put it in Hebrew and it's something from... Uh, entity that has both beings within it. What makes more sense for the guidance of people on this planet in the flesh? Fairy tales or reality? That's where you have to distinguish. Geez, that really actually makes more sense. And that sounds plausible instead of something that is so mystical that you can't seem to grasp it without satanic guidance, you know, which is like even within churches, the vibration of the um, music and the that is meant to lull you into, um, it's a type of hypnotism. The music the tone of it, the rhythm of it, everything is designed against you. No matter what anybody thinks or says. Yep. Give them your money. Pay them to keep you stupefied. And pay them to never let you seek God's face on your own because you have to have a go-between. Or do you? You know, cheers, everybody. So, so, yeah, it would be the King James for me. And I've told people the word amen. Initially, the root of that word means end of man. I've told people this over and over and over. And they keep, still keep casting a spell upon their self. It's the same with hallelujah. That means hail Satan. You are praising when these people just spit out language that they don't even know what they're saying. You know? It's just like, and still, even in the Greek, there's some that misconstrue um, the bringer of light, the light bearer, the bringer of light, Satan monkeying with the flesh of human beings, what he was able to bring it into us. No, it still belongs to God. The language doesn't do God a service. Um, yeah, it was brought to mankind through that vessel. If we have to word it like that for people, whoever they are. You know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't be scared to learn something new. Just weigh it with what you already know and what you've read. And listen to older texts that say the same thing by a thousand years prior or more from the same root people that split and went in different directions. I'm just asking you to listen to another um, uh, mode of understanding the whole thing. You know, that's all. Just listen to it. I, I would never instruct somebody to drop God out of their life or not want to communicate with the spirit of goodness within ourselves. So just any thoughts beyond that, that's on you. If you don't want to know even what your opposition would be doing, that's also on you. Who wouldn't want to know what would be used against me or you? 
why would not why wouldn't you want to know their playbook and their modes of attack you know it would be really unwise not to you're strong enough nothing's going to hurt you out of it god's going to take care of your heart there is nothing to fear in knowledge of another language and that aspect of that ancientness towards these scriptures, which is spelling and spell casting and God spell. You have to see the God spell. You have to see the spell casting in that book and what you're doing to yourself before you keep doing that and passing it on through the generations. Understand the different aspects of the people in that book, you know? Just like I'm sure you've heard Eve, Eve isn't the first woman ever made. And there's more than one Adam. And Christ was in Adam at the first. And I mean, all these things, is it truth or lies? I mean, do you want to know? You know? I want to know as much as I can know. And I'm sure I'm smart enough with my heart to determine what is truth and what isn't. And I just want to get down to the truth of our history and these Gospels. It, it's the Jewish that calls them the Holy Scriptures. Holy moly. Um, Christians call it the Bible. The Holy Bible. And uh, Gnostics and scholars call it text. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of things that are inspired by God to help human beings in writing, even outside of the scriptures. Songs, poems, all kinds of stuff praising God, not just what the Hebrew identify as but the other people in the world they don't even want to admit that abraham's seed seeds filled the whole earth and that that would make his family worldwide uh rabbi do not acknowledge that care about that or you or i period but yet you're gonna follow a book they printed for you to be deceived without knowing what's actually in that book. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what people need to know. Please share this and share. I'm going to um, share Dr. Amon's work. And, and you can decipher it for yourself. Like I said, don't be afraid. If you're afraid of the truth, then you didn't have God in your heart to begin with. You know? And you might not ever, if you keep following uh, the ways of people that want to keep you enslaved. So, Oh, by the way, I have uh, another uh, father and daughter that follow me or have watched me. Tammy and Jim. Hi. Thank you for giving me your ears for a while. I appreciate that. The more people I can uh, expose the, to the things that I've learned in life, unfortunately, um, I didn't have a lot of people to talk to a lot of the times. But now more and more people are starting to understand the stress it put me under just learning that, you know, things that we thought were true are not true, you know. So. 
Yes, God gave of himself to come into the flesh to be with us, and that's the light within us that is here, and that still has nothing to do with Satan creating anything. He hates us. He hates all that is good, and that's the end of that story, you know. But those that want to keep us enslaved have written a playbook for us to follow. And I think it's time people understand just what happened to our history and our texts and literature and everything. We need to understand where that went and how it changed and who changed it and why. Why would people do that to other people? That's killing your enemy from the inside. That's what that is. You don't get more sneaky than to put your um, uh, army in your opponent and kill them from within. That's a, a war tactic. I uh, started listening to it's uh, oh jeez the rambling rambling Christian Tom was reading out of the book of Isaiah and then went to read some of um, Adam and Eve out of the Gnostic text which I really loved it was like okay that's cool because then you can um understand that there's people in different areas with the same knowledge that were writing different things um, even prior to the scriptures and what was written and make the comparison for yourself. And even that has been um, infiltrated. Everything has been infiltrated and we have to read it with our hearts. Even when you're listening to somebody, you know you can hear truth in people. And what what's their ulterior motive? Are they trying to make money? Are they actually trying to help people? What, what do they care about? How did they start on their venture of what they do in their life? What compelled you or I to do what we do um, for others? What compels us? You know, if it's self-serving, we would have to sit back and say, what is that person going to get out of what they're trying to tell us? You know. And most people are out for their selves in one way or another. Some people just really want to share every amount of truth that we can share and put things together in our own lives and say, yeah, this absolutely makes sense and I can see. And even if somebody's teaching something and they have an idea about what something is, but if you have tangible proof through um, heritage and transcripts and writings and teachings from people and great scholars that um, correlate in the same on the same level. They, they, they're in agreement. They don't have to do a, like a study and take a census, census on what they agree upon. It just kind of flows naturally. When you run across those type of people that are getting to the bottom of the truth and still have God in their heart and they're not playing any games with language or greed or any of that type of thing, you'll know. Those are the golden ones, you know. Those are the people we have to cherish out here 
you know. Mama said cherish with an S. When I was a little kid, I had, and sometimes still do, a slight speech impediment on my CHs and S's. So, I was, after that, going to a speech therapist, able to teach my dad and other people that had stuttering problems how to overcome that. I had asked my instructor, um, what do I, what does a person like this do? And she taught me that their minds are going so fast, their words don't come out. So to take that second of pause and go forward helps with any impediment. So, and that's true, I found. So, and I've actually helped like one of my bosses, my dad, um, yeah, a couple people, you know. It's like this one old country singer from the 60s or 70s, Ronnie Millsap. He could barely even talk. But when he sang, it flowed. It was so beautiful um, to see him like talk, talk, talking to us and then singing just, ah, oh, you know. He was able to slow his mind through his music and, yeah, it was pretty cool. I wish I could have taught him that trick, <laughs> you know. And because a lot of people, I don't think, realize how, how much our minds actually do race, you know, until we learn how to calm and still ourselves. I, I struggle with that. We all do, you know. Um, there's more than just ourselves in our flesh, you know. I think a lot of people are pretty aware of that by now, you know. And it's just borrowed. You know. I'd like to touch on something for my friend Uma. I don't think we'll ever have so much of a dis disagreement that we wouldn't be able to have friends. I would never want to see anybody hurt. And I know a lot of things I say are scary to hear. My... the. The love in my heart, first off, the kids come first, no matter what it takes to protect them from danger in the future. And um, you were talking about, like, what next, like, you or I, something that, like, if we wore lipstick or a dress and we were a guy and got thrown in jail, or, like, you shave your head, and I did with my allergies. It all fell out, and I shaved it and started from scratch. So I've actually been a bald woman myself, but, um, and I understand your concern. And all we can do is, yes, pray, pray, and keep praying that these things will work them out for the betterment of everybody. You know, that's all we can do. I would never, ever want to see anybody harmed in any way. So it's, it's nothing more sickening in the world to me. I used to like horror movies. I can't even, I can't stand it. I can't stand war movies. I, it's just like, Talk about desensitizing people with all this, you know, like it's normal or the war games or whatever. Um, I used to play, uh, oh, it was, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the set that it was with Mario on there and them. Um, it was after Atari, they had a gaming system, um, 
I should remember it, but that's okay. I'm not going to stress myself, but you know what I mean. But we used to play this one uh, double eagle, eagle, where we'd both be like uh, helicopter pilots over in Vietnam and see how many of the um, Hoi Nam or whoever we could take out on a mission, you know, and Oh, it was called, oh, and then Desert Storm. That's the one I'm thinking. Double Eagle was good, too, though. And then I loved uh, Street Fighter and Karnoff and Castlevania. I loved that one. I would still play that one if I had it. I just thought I got to the top and whipped the crap out of that vampire bat up there. <laughs> with my whip, killed him, and saved the princess, so, yeah, and I, uh, finally beat Zelda, but my little kid beat Zelda before I did, <laughs> so, yeah. he was probably eight or nine, I was struggling on that one, but, yeah, What do you do in the middle of winter if you're stuck? We, we were pretty much like in a city, sort of. There wasn't a lot of hills around to go sliding. There was nothing, you know, so that was entertaining somewhat. Anyway, I'm thinking, no, Atari and then was, what was that stuff? Oh, no, I can't remember. That's terrible. Oh, you know. You know what they are. <laughs> oh, didn't you love, like, Mario? I loved, I think it was on the fourth stage. I really stunk at it. Um, Where you could go swimming. There was a little Mario, and he'd swim through. That was my favorite part. If I could get there and just swim with that little Mario, it was so cool. And then I had a game called Tubing, where you could go uh, down the rapids on your inner tube, and you had to be careful and all that. And I used to buy used games that had been refurbished, and I'd put like my order in for a game we wanted. And then we go pick it up like um, for like five dollars instead of like a forty dollar game. Somebody would return it or trade it. Then I'd be able to like buy it. I'd get on a list for one I was waiting for or that type of thing. Back in the day, <laughs> you know, that's what young working parents do: sit around and play video games. No, not really. But yeah, sorta. I didn't have a lot of time to do that, but yeah, especially my, my oldest, if I could sit and play a game with him, he was pretty happy. So, yeah, my youngest wasn't into it as much. The dad was, he was a, a gamer. Yeah, a gamer, all right. Oh, I heard somebody talking about narcissists and how they change their tactics and adapt. And then I've heard other people, well, narcissists will never say thank or um, they're sorry or, oh, man, I have had ones cry and hug me and then beat me up right there after all the apologies in the world, just like any other normal human being. Oh, no, they'll do and say anything to get their way in life. Anything. They'll adapt to whatever they have to adapt to to get their way in the world. That's a fact. I've seen it. Not out of just one person, but several of them. So, no, they, they'll, they'll say sorry, too. They'll cry. They do, they do it all, you know. Yesterday was a bit hard thinking of Joseph because we we never did find out if he was okay or not. And I had spent time without my kids not knowing if they were okay. And that is a really horrible 
position for any mom to be in. So at least I knew where my kids were, but I knew they weren't okay. She never knew. She never found out. We think that he got taken into Mexico. I shared a story of a man posing as a woman that is a repeat R-A-P-I-S-T of children. Uh, the last one was a nine-year-old boy, and this man was also caught with uh, kitty porn adults, R-A-P-I-N-G children. Repeat offender, a man put into a woman's prison. Um, that's not really caring about those women too much, is it? Six foot two dude. A big guy. Just think about the women that have had their children R-A-P-E-D. How they must feel having to be in the same area or even be in jeopardy themselves. That's it's just so fucking ridiculous all this shit. You know. Senator Ted Cruz tried to um urge the judge to see the error of her retarded ways and she wouldn't back off with the bullshit that and that that brings to mind these people that are on hormone-changing drugs before they get arrested, are we expected as the taxpayers to continue their hormone replacements to change their gender within our prison systems too? Because this thing was put in the female prison with ongoing medical care. What is that medical care that we're paying for this man to have around these women? So these women have to take a shower with this person and all his personage, whether they like it or not. If it was your daughter or my daughter or granddaughters in the same cell with this huge man, that is a, oh, God, this world's gone too far, you know. These are the things I'm guarding about. This is what I'm talking about, you know. They're trying to normalize things that are abnormal, and it's just not cool. I know we love people, but we can't make excuses for mental illness that's inflicted on other people in any way. You know, that's the issue. The protection of all people, not just the one doing the offending. You know, please understand that. Simple as that. So and we still have to approach everything in a loving manner. I agree with that. So I'm going to get this uploaded. I'm going to share that link too. It's called... Uh, it's so important, people. I don't give a hoot about the title, Eve Was Superior, Wednesday Night Bible Study Session 6, Episode um, 5, 6, I think. Uh, just, just hear it out till the end and understand the pers from the perspective that the Word of God is written on our hearts period, and go into actually studying everything with that aspect, and it'll be okay. I mean, I'm a, I'm a great believer that the Bible is a good book with its commandments and laws in there for everybody to understand the difference of right and wrong if we didn't. And it is a sacred book in a lot of respects. 
it's also a very deceiving book in a lot of respects, and people need to know that. The last word in the book is the spell of you being eliminated. Taking the man out of the flesh and ascending, you could look at it like that too. And there'll be people that, but that is not the wording and that is not what it is. And I'm out to prove the difference to people. Keeping God in our hearts. And understanding what was twisted, where it was twisted, and why. And so you can really get down to the truth to teach the next generations. Otherwise, where and why shouldn't you be able to read something with clear understanding that makes perfect sense besides something that is non-scientific at all? And try and make sense of, out of something that isn't even provable in the flesh. Now, if we're talking just spiritual, that's one thing. But that isn't what's being portrayed in the whole thing. So th with that understanding, that's how it's a book of good and evil. Because it's very deceptive if you don't know the truth of the whole thing. So, okay, everybody. Uh, peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good night or day wherever you're at.